Yeah. in a uh, trading business well it's you know when you look at trading you, you are your own ceo you're, you're the decision maker you're also your own supplier and you're also your own customer and so you have a lot of freedom in that but there's a lot of responsibility in that as well too so let's say you run a, a business that mm, you know doesn't have some good business practices in the background but you've got a product that people just love and they don't care. So they can end up driving that business to success. Well, you don't have that luxury because you are your own customer. You're your own shop. Um, similarly, if you have a really good ran business, but you don't have a product that anybody wants, then your business is not going to go anywhere. And so you got to have both sides of the coin. And with trading, you get to be in charge of all of that. In addition, all your successes and all your failures fall squarely on your on your shoulders and so treating it like a business means give it the same care and attention and follow through you know we we talk about all the only decisions you need to make is buying and selling it's a simple two clicks of the mouse and you're in and you're out right but there's more that goes into that just like a business so if you run a coffee shop Having a successful coffee shop isn't just about taking money and giving somebody coffee or, or a Danish or whatever. Um, there's supply that you need to pay attention to. There's keeping the books. There's balancing um, the amount of, of inventory that you have with the amount of customers, especially if you're in the fresh, fresh baked goods business, right? You don't want stuff that nobody's going to buy stuff that's a day, two day, three day old, right? That's the stuff that goes on sale for 50% on the counter in a little basket. So being able to give it the same care and time and attention and focus that a successful business owner gives their business and that's the entirety of it. So um, specifically to trading uh, for me is the the mindset work and the pre-trade ritual and the actual analysis that I go through before I start trading or before I decide to, to purchase some stocks um, all the way down to keeping track of the dollars and cents, keeping track of my trades. And then in addition to that, um, we talk about the trade log, but there's a component to the trade log where you're actually summarizing what's going on. Why did you make those decisions and what lessons learned so you can grow from them? So being your own business, being your own trading business is be focused, give it the time, attention and love that you would your own business. It's not a game. Um, and for me personally, at given times throughout my process, before I started treating trading like a business, I would skimp on some of those things. Um, so I would trade outside a process and I would uh, take a flyer or I, I heard something on the news or somebody told me something or I had a belief that something was going to go. And so I would trade outside a process um, and or I would not log my trade. So I go through a period of time where I don't even know if I'm up or if I'm down. <laughs> and <laughs> I haven't even figured out, uh, there's no remark section, there's no lessons learned. So again, I wasn't growing, I wasn't going anywhere. And what we see happens probably the most when people don't treat trading like a business and give it the focus and attention that it needs is we continue to just operate in the same decision-making loops. So we tend to not be able to identify drift in our trading or moving away from process. And we fall back into some of these old paradigms that we were talking about, about our relationship with money or allowing ego to get involved or wanting to be right instead of getting it right. Uh, some of those ideas start to creep back in that we don't even recognize. And then by the time we self-correct, we've already taken a pretty decent hit in that trading account and we start to improve.